Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here. You're a spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. I wanted to make a short video today talking a little bit more in depth about plant magic. It's a topic that has come up in one of my previous videos, so I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on that since people have an interest in it. First, I'm going to go over some common plants that you can use both indoors and outdoors for magical purposes, and then I'm going to go over some really basic and simple ideas for how you can actually work with those plants um, and work them into your magical life or your magical practice. The first house plant I want to talk about is aloe. It, it guards against evil influences and household accidents. Aloe is very protective. You can see I have one right up there. I love my aloe plants. In Africa, they actually hang aloe over their houses and doorsteps to drive away evil and bring good luck. So aloe has a really long um, lore about it. It's a really powerful plant. Geraniums, they can, geraniums can actually be grown indoors if they have enough sunlight. And if they do have enough sunlight, they will bloom year round. They smell great and they'll flower all year, like I said. Pink geraniums are for love, white geraniums are for fertility, red geraniums are for protection and to alert witches of oncoming danger. That's some old folklore there, to alert witches of oncoming danger. So you can watch for signs in your geraniums and actually learn their language and learn how to read the, the signs of the geraniums. Outside of your home, you can grow rosemary. I love rosemary personally. I use it in a lot of my magic and in a lot of my root work. Um, rosemary is good for protection, lust, love, and healing. It's also good for memory. I use rosemary for remembrance. I think that's something that Scott Cunningham wrote that has always stuck with me, rosemary for remembrance. I use it for remembrance and love, to remember the good times, to remember your loved one. Um, to remember your deep emotions, your deep feelings. So I use rosemary in that way in a lot of love magic. And it's very protective. It's also, it brings intensity to pretty much anything that you use it with. So you can also use it in anything, it, in anything to add intensity and to add power and energy to that service or that working. Um, basil, as we all know, is great for money to be grown outside of the home. A nice place to grow that is by your front door to bring prosperity into the home. That's an old tradition. The same with bay, or bay leaves is what is most often grown or used, the part of the plant that's oft most often used. But you can grow bay in order to bring money and prosperity, good luck and good fortune. You can also grow that by your front door. And let's talk a little bit about how to use these plants. So you can talk to or pray to your plants when you're watering them, when you're fertilizing them, when you're walking by them. You can touch their leaves and talk to them and talk to them about what you need in your life or give them some gratitude for what they're doing for you. Um, the reason that this is a nice way to add some magical elements into your daily life is because your plants are a part of your daily life. You're going to see them as you're walking around your house, as you're going about your activities, and you can interact with them every day. You can also make caring for the plant into a magical practice so that each time you're caring for the plant, you are reinforcing your own intentions, reinforcing your relationship with the plant and also reinforcing that magic that you're doing with them, which is a great way to create change in your life, is to have a, a routine and to have um, an outward symbol that helps you reinforce those intentions. So that is a great thing to do, is to make the watering and the fertilizing a part of a, a magical activity for you. You can insert or bury paper petitions into the soil. Um, you want to make sure that those paper petitions are additive-free and easily biodegradable paper. Paper, Of course, you don't want to put crazy stuff in there that's going to interfere with your plant's health in any way. But that's a great interactive thing that you can do with your plants. You can also bury lucky coins if you're doing magic for prosperity. 
Um, you can also vary your mojo bags or your charm bags or any other charms. You can really, especially if this is a pot that's large, if this is a large plant in a large pot, you have a lot of room to work with. You can make that plant a, a living spell or a living uh, working that is a part of your everyday life and that can last for years, that can help you um, on a daily basis reinforce your protection, reinforce your prosperity, reinforce your loving, peaceful vibrations in your home. Thing, I mentioned those things because these are things that we need to be working on all of the time in order to prevent problems in our lives. We don't want to just seek magic or seek our magical practice when we're in an emergency or crisis. A lot of things can be prevented if we're working on these things all the time. Prosperity, protection, and relationships are three of the major areas that we really should be, we really should have a somewhat of a routine in place to work on constantly. And doing so with your house plants is a great way to do that. You can offer incense in your soil or pots. Again, you of course you want to make sure that you're not like burning the plant or putting anything in the soil that's gonna gonna interfere. Um, usually, if it's a large enough plant, there's not a problem. I have a very large fiddle leaf ficus by my front door, and I burn incense in that pot every day, and it has not harmed that plant. It is a very large, healthy plant who has incense burned in its soil daily for the last three years or so, and it's doing great. In fact, ashes can be really good for soil. So as long as you're not using like crazy chemical incense, um, something that wouldn't be good for you or your household environment in the first place, then you, it should be fine for your plant as well. And the ashes can actually help to fortify and um, fertilize the soil. You can offer crystals and sacred stones. You can do that by burying those in the soil, or you can do it just by sitting those right on top of the soil. Some crystals and stones will actually help the growth of the plant, whereas some of them you may just be using for your own purposes for the kind of magic that you're performing. You can always make watering the plants an offering. I believe I mentioned to make caring for the plant a part of your magical practice, but I may not have mentioned that those things can be an offering to the plant. So you can say a prayer to the plant when you water it. You can say something like, I honor you with this sacred water to help you grow. I, I, as you prosper, my life prospers. Um, I respect you and I'm grateful for all that you've done in my life so far and for the all you will do in the future. Something simple like that, just make up a prayer of your own, say it from your heart, and say your prayer each time that you water it, letting the plant know that this is an offering of gratitude from you to the plant. You can give coffee or coffee grounds to your plants. This is something that I also do. I will say it will change the pH level of the soil. It will make it higher in acidity. So you don't want to do it with plants that are um, sensitive to high acidity. You want to be careful of that. But most um, house plants tolerate coffee or coffee grounds, and it's very nourishing to the plants. It's very much fortifying to the soil. Um, using coffee grounds in your indoor plants is a little bit, um, can, can be maybe a little bit annoying for your, your home. You're going to smell those coffee grounds. You might attract some some critters, <laughs> things of that nature. That's something the more that I do um, with outside plants. But if you mix it into the soil, you can use it for your indoor plants. And that can be another way that you give offerings to your plants. You can draw or paint symbols on the pot that correspond to the kind of magical or the magical energies that you're working on. You can even um, write your name or your petitions on the inside of the pot before you actually plant that plant. If you already know from the beginning that you have obtained a plant that you're going to be using for magical purposes throughout time, you can actually write things on the inside of the pot so that other people can't see it. But you know that it's there and it's contributing to that magical energy. You can burn your hair or nail clippings or even use your menstrual blood to fortify um, or water the plants. Um, 
putting some of your personal effects into any kind of spell work is going to create that link to you, which makes sympathetic magic all that much stronger. Um, there's a long, long tradition of using menstrual blood in magic and using menstrual blood to fertilize plants. So if you're somebody who's not afraid to work with your menstrual blood, you may want to give that a try. It will make a very healthy plant. Um, some people use urine. I know these are taboo subjects, but these are, are topics that have been brought up in old folklore and that do persist in a lot of magic. So those are always options if you're somebody who's not shy to those kinds of things. It's not as if you have to advertise it to everybody. You don't have to go on YouTube and speak about it the way that I am. Um, but adding your hair and your nail clippings will definitely help to create a link to you and help to make that magic stronger, especially if it's something that you're trying to grow within yourself or focus on for your own self-development or a goal that you're trying to grow, something something that you personally are working on, then you may want to add some of your own personal elements. So there's a little bit about plant magic. I hope that you like it. I hope it's fun for you. Maybe you've got some new ideas for working with the plants in your home or surrounding your home. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and share the video. Share it with your friends. Um, don't forget to comment. Please feel free to ask me questions. If there's anything that's come up in the video that you would like elaboration on, I'm happy to consider that for a future video. If you have any questions, please do let me know. I'm easy to reach. And if you have suggestions for other videos, other topics, I'm always happy to take your suggestions um, into account. So thanks so much and stay blessed.